Good evening. The 11th meeting of the 73rd term of the Baltimore City Council is now called to order. Members of the council, due to us using uh, and being connected virtually, uh, please note that I'll recognize you by saying your name and saying that you have the floor. Once I recognize you, again, please state your name and then begin to speak. Tonight's invocation will be given to us by Reverend Dr. Felicia Diggs Hudson of New Israelite Church of God. Reverend Diggs Hudson, the floor is yours. Good evening and thank you once again for inviting me to do the invocation. Let us pray. Father, we thank you on this day, Lord God, we thank you and we want to give you thanks before we ask you for anything. God, we just thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for our lying down last night and thank you for your protection and your covering, Lord God. Thank you for such a time as this that you enable us to come back together again. Now, Lord God, we ask as always, Father God, if there be any sin among us, God, that you would Forgive us, Lord. Help us to be better, Father God, and help us to continue, Lord God, looking to you, Father God, to cleanse us and to help us to be better. God, we ask right now that you would come in the midst of this meeting, Lord. God, your word says that we should acknowledge you in all of our ways and you would be so kind to direct our path. So, God, we ask that you would look down upon this council and that you would come into the midst and be the center, be the head, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, God, whatever decisions have to be made, God, you ask, we ask, Lord God, that you would go before us, Lord God. Give us your peace. Give us your calmness, Lord God. Give us your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. God, keep us safe on tonight. And when we lie down on tonight, God, give us sweet sleep and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Dr. Felicia Dix Hudson, uh, for your wonderful words. Now, at this time, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, please turn to a flag or put a flag up on your screen. Uh, and with now time to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight's showcase um, is Baltimore for Baltimore is Turnaround Incorporated. This is an organization providing counseling and support to victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, and sex trafficking. At this time, I would like to recognize Ms. Amanda Rodriguez, Executive Director, uh, and ask her to introduce her team uh, that will be joining us. Thank you so much for having me this evening. Um, my name is Amanda Rodriguez. I am the executive director of Turnaround. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Turnaround, we are the designated rape crisis center for Baltimore City. We're also a comprehensive victim service provider for intimate partner violence survivors and those that have experienced human trafficking. Um, Turnaround's impact became very real for me when I was a practicing attorney working for the agency a few years ago. I was sitting next to a client at uh, the public defender's office and she had come to us just a few days before seeking emergency shelter because she was um, severely injured after a, a physical altercation with her partner left her in the hospital. But as is pretty typical, um, her uh, abusive partner charged her with assault. So we were sitting there in the public defender's office um, and the public defender was going through a series of questions and he stopped and he asked her a very pointed question. And I will never forget the look on her face and how her face fell. Um, she actually looked down into her hands um, when he asked this question. He's asked if she had ever been sexually assaulted. And she, uh, still looking down, said, Sir, I don't know a woman in Baltimore that has not been raped. The pervasiveness of sexual violence in our community has a real and lasting health and emotional and community impact. It is interwoven and interconnected to all forms of violence, including gun violence. One in five women in their lifetime are raped. And how many women are there in Baltimore? Just in the city limits alone, it's over 300,000 women. How many of you know more than five women? When a woman, a man, or a child is sexually assaulted in Baltimore, turnaround can provide immediate and long-term services to that individual free of charge. We have two office locations, one in downtown and one in Towson. We provide therapy, case management, advocacy, which looks like going to court with someone, providing support around Title IX investigations, just providing support around helping someone make decisions around whether or not they want to go to police or whether or not they want to have a safe exam. Providing crisis intervention, which is a 24-7 hotline because we know that assault does not happen nine to five. 
Um, we have a text line, so if people don't feel calling, they can text us. Uh, we have a pantry and clothing closet and a drop-in center located in our downtown location. We also now have an outreach worker who actually goes onto campuses, and if someone is there and wants services, they can sign up immediately with that person. They don't even have to make another phone call. If anyone is listening and needs support, um, our 24-hour hotline is 443-279-0379, and our text line is 410-498-5956. And again, those are staffed 24-7 if anyone ever needs support. Turnaround has been providing these services in Baltimore since 1978, and we serve thousands of our community every year. During COVID, we saw an increase to our helpline of over 300% and an increase to our calls for clinical services of over 150%. We know that the community need right now is great, and so we want our response to the community to be great. We are going to spend 2021 amplifying our community response so that every person that needs us in the city can get immediate access to services and support. We want to partner with each of you, of our, our city council partners, so that we can tailor our outreach and prevention strategies to the communities that you serve. And we will be reaching out in hopes that we are going to be able to do that and scheduling time together to really work towards some of these issues together. At Turnaround, we believe very strongly in the power of the team, and we are stronger collectively and can accomplish so much by working together. So we, we are very hopeful that you will join Team Turnaround and help us to eliminate sexual violence in our community. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Executive Director uh, Rodriguez. Uh, we appreciate you joining us tonight. The clerk will call the roll of all members. President Mosby, Councilmember Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, one note for the record, Council Member Slifer will not be able to join us this evening. He is observing uh, a religious holiday. So for the record to reflect that this is an excused absence uh, and on behalf of the council, I would like to extend my best wishes uh, to Councilman and all other constituents observing the holiday this evening. We will now proceed with the adoption of the journal. President, the journal of the May 3rd, 2021 proceedings are on the council member's desk. Without objection, the journal will be adopted. Hearing and seeing none, the journal is adopted. Communications from the mayor can be found on page two and three of the agenda. We will now move to executive nominations. Clerk, please read the nominations. EA 21-0031, Dr. Jason W. Mitchell. This nomination has been assigned to the Rules and Oversight Committee. We will now move to bills being introduced on first reading. Clerk, please read the first bill. City Council Bill 21-0080, Ordinance of Estimates for the Fiscal Year Ending June 30th, 2022. For the purpose of providing the appropriations est estimated, estimated to be needed by each agency of the City of Baltimore for operating programs and capital projects during the fiscal 20. 2022 year. Sponsor, Mosby on behalf of the administration. This bill has been assigned to the Ways and Means Committee. Next bill, Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 21-0081, Annual Property Tax, Fiscal Year 2022, for the purpose of providing a tax for the use of the Mayor and City Council of Baltimore for the period July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, and setting the semi-annual payment service charge for that period. Sponsor, Mosby. President Mosby on behalf of the administration. This bill has been assigned to the Ways and Means Committee. Madam Clerk, please read the next bill. City Council Bill 21-0082, operating budget for the Baltimore City Board of School Commissioners for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. For the purpose of approving the budget estimated to be needed for the Baltimore City Board of School Commissioners for operating programs during fiscal year 2022, providing for certification of the approved budget to the state superintendent of schools and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, President Mosby on behalf of the administration. 
Thank you, Madam Clerk. This bill has been assigned to the Ways and Means Committee, now under 21-83. City Council Bill 21-83, Franchise Gas Regulator Station Utility at Lower Gwynn Falls Park. For the purpose of granting a franchise to Baltimore Gas and Electric Company to construct, use, and maintain a gas regulator station utility, subject to certain terms, conditions, and reservations, and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, President Mosby, on behalf of the administration. This bill has been assigned to Economic and Community Development. On to 21-84, Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 21-84, Franchise, Gas Regulator Station Utility in Hanlon Park. For the purpose of granting a franchise to Baltimore Gas and Electric Company to construct, use, and maintain a 40 by 100 foot gas regulator station utility, subject to certain terms, conditions, and reservations, and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, President Mosby on behalf of the administration. This bill has been assigned to the Ways and Means Committee as well. I'm sorry, Economic Development Committee. Uh, clerk, please read the next bill. City Council Bill 21-85, Baltimore City Fire Code, telephone access to 911 emergency system. For the purpose of requiring that certain multiple line telephone systems allow for the direct dial of 911, defining certain terms, authorizing certain inspections, providing for certain fines, and generally relating to access to the city's 911 emergency system. Sponsor, President Mosby on behalf of the administration. This bill has been assigned to Economic Community Development. Now on to 21-86, Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 21-86, Minority and Women, Women's Business Program, Interim Extension. For the purpose of postponing for an interim period the automatic termination of the Minority and Women's Business Program, providing for a special effective date and generally relating to city procurement requirements. Sponsor, President Mosby on behalf of the administration. This bill has been assigned to Public Safety and Government Operations. Madam Clerk, on to 21-87. City Council Bill 21-87, rezoning 100 East 23rd Street, 2300 St. Paul Street, 2305 St. Paul Street, 2313 St. Paul Street, and 2317 St. Paul Street. For the purpose of changing the zoning for the properties known as 100 East 23rd Street, 2300 St. Paul Street, 2305 St. Paul Street, 2313 St. Paul Street, and 2317 St. Paul Street, as outlined in red on the accompanying plat from the OR2 zoning district to the C1 zoning district. Sponsor, Stokes. Uh, this uh, bill has been assigned to ACD committee. Madam Clerk, on to 21-88. City Council Bill 21-88, study and report integrated services model. For the purpose of requiring that the Mayor's Office of Children and Family Success, in consultation with partner agencies and organization, submit a report to the Mayor and City Council regarding the adjustment of the service delivery system so that when families enter one part of the system, they can access all parts of the system, including older adult services and the homeowner's tax credit, and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, Ramos. This bill has been assigned to Public Safety and Government Operations. speak on this bill? Yes, you can. Um, uh, Councilwoman Ramos, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. Uh, this bill, again, comes from um, a lot of work that we've done around tax sale. I was trying to figure out how we can make it easier for our elders and those eligible to um, apply for the homeowner's tax credit because it is such an important program. And more than half of the people that I helped over this last few weeks were eligible but did not apply. And uh, so I, um, you know, in some of my experience, you know, statewide, there are models out there. And of course, Baltimore's promise here in Baltimore City has been working towards uh, something that I'd like to see. And that's why we're trying to do a study and report. There are models in other parts of the state that say if somebody enters, asks for, you know, rental assistance, asks for, uh, well, we may not rental assistance, but uh, asks for, um, uh you know any kind of help that they are getting food stamps or you know um fuel fund etc that the whole family then gets an assessment of what they're eligible for and gets enrolled right away so an example in my district um i have a constituent who uh just forgot to pay her taxes she forgot to apply for the homeowner's tax credit but one member of her family has uh, developmental disabilities and gets bused to various services there's your entry point. 
can we make sure that that young person is also and all of the family members get an evaluation of what they're eligible for and um, and then get uh, enrolled right away. It has been done in other places. I'd like to see it done in Baltimore and the study and report is the first step. So thank you colleagues. Thank you, Mr. President for the opportunity and I look forward to the hearing um, and the next steps on this initiative. Thank you. No, thank you, Councilwoman Ramos, uh, for your passion around this. Uh, this bill has been assigned to Public Safety and Government Operations Committee. Madam Clerk, on to 21 89. City Council Bill 21 89, City Property, naming the property, located at Ward 6, Section 9, Block 1318, Lot 2, also known as 199 North Carolina Street, to be the Dante Barksdale Square. For the purpose of naming the city property located at Ward 6, Section 9, Block 1318, Lot 2, also known as 199 North Caroline Street, to be Dante Barksdale Square. Sponsors, Stokes. The sponsorship should actually read as Mosby. Uh, this would be my bill. Um, this bill has been assigned to Economic and Community Development. We're still working out uh, through HABC as well as DOT, who actually owns. Uh, the site. Uh, so we're going to work those details out prior to having this bill heard. Uh, so again, this bill has been assigned to ECD. Uh, now on, you can find the consent calendar in section A at the back of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Motion to approve. Second by Councilman Stokes. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The motion carries, uh, the calendar is approved. We will now move uh, to bills on second reader. Madam Clerk, if you could go and start reading uh, bills on second reader, I think we start with 21-23. Mr. President. I'm sorry, we forgot how important. Uh, Chair, uh, Chairman Costello, you have the floor. Thank you, Thanks. Mr. President. I move we read short titles for second and third reader for the duration of the meeting. Uh, there's been a request on the floor to go to short titles. Uh, uh, is there un any unreadiness or concern? Hearing and seeing none, uh, we will be on short titles for the remainder of second reader. Madam Clerk, if you could go into City Council Bill 21-23. City Council Bill 21-23, Urban Renewal, Middle East Amendment. At this time, I would like to recognize and yield the floor to Madam Vice President Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. On uh, May 17th, 2021, we heard uh, four bills. The first one, uh, bill number 21-0023, um, this Urban Renewal Middle East Amendment. The sponsor was Councilman Glover of the 13th District. The, uh, we heard the committee heard this bill on uh, May 4th, 2021. Uh, the committee voted for a technical amendment, which would number this urban renewal amendment as number 14. I move the amendment. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been properly moved and second. All those in favor of adopting the committee, the committee amendments, please say aye. Uh, Not all at once. Uh, all right. Those who are opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted. Uh, Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. I move the bill favorable as amended. Is there a second? Second, Torrance. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor of approving this bill, please say as amended, please say aye. Aye. Not all at once. All, all those opposed, please say nay. The bill will be printed for third reading. Now on to 21-25. City Council Bill 21-25, rezoning 2200, 2205, 2220, 2300, 2301, 2310, 2330, 2400, and 2500, Browning Highway and Block 6916 and Lot 15. Madam Vice President, I yield the floor to you. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> the sponsor of this bill was Councilman Cohen of the 1st District. Uh, the committee heard this bill on May 11th, 2021. The finding of facts 
um, should be in council members electronic folders. I move the findings. It's been moved. Is there a second? I second, Connelly. It's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor of approving the committee amendments, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted. Uh, Madam President, the, Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, the committee voted to amend the bill to remove a property and revise the plat. I move the amendment. Second it, Torrance. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Of, of this, uh, of the committee, of the bill as amended, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Uh, this bill will be printed for third reader. Madam Clerk, on to 21-40. Um, we have to move the bill favorable as amended. I'm sorry, I thought we just did that. Uh, to, uh, we, Madam, Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. Uh, we move the bill favorable as amended. So we did a finding of the facts, then we had got to- it, got uh, it. I got it. I caught up. I caught up. Okay. Do we have a second? Second, Conway. Second. All right. So it's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of approving the bill as amended, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Now the bill will be printed for third reading. Uh, Madam Vice President, thank you for catching that. On to 21-40. City Council Bill 21-40, Floodplain Management Code Revision. Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. Thank you. The committee heard this bill also on uh, May 11th, 2021. The committee, whoops, one second. The committee voted to amend the bill. When the bill was introduced, it removed golf courses as an allowed use in the floodways am i um are we on the second one did we, we already did yes i'm on the right one so um when this bill was introduced it removed golf courses as an allowed use in the floodways other recreation facilities such as athletic fields and parks were allowed to remain in the floodway the impact of the floodway on all recreation facilities needs to be studied at a later time. The amendment will allow golf courses to remain as an allowed use. I move the amendment. It's been moved, is there a second? Second, Conway. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of approving the amendments, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The amendment adopted. Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. I move the bill favorable as amended. Second. Wrong it's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of approving the bill as amended, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The bill will be printed for third reader. Um, Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. And okay, then we heard bill number, this was the fourth bill, 21 no, I think at this point, we're gonna invoke council rule 12-1 and three. Um, no, just 12-1 for second and third reader on the same night. You know, this is a bill that uh, is tied to floodplain insurance and has a, deliver, a deliverable date that we have to go in. So at this point, I think we're gonna try to invoke again, 12-1. For, for second and third read on single right, right. To, to move this yes we're we're doing this to um there's a time constraint here and we want to move this um bill to third reader tonight do i have a motion so moved. Yeah. all right yeah. well she didn't follow so I, I think i heard a motion in a second is um um to having this done um at this point, because we are uh, invoking a city council rule, uh, we're going to actually have to have a roll call. So, Madam Clerk, based off of city council rules, if you could call roll. President Mosby. Aye. Councilmember Cohen. Yes. Councilwoman McRae. Yes. 
Councilman Dorsey. Yes. Councilman Conway. Aye. Councilman Schleifer. Vice President Middleton. Yes. Councilman Torrance. Aye. Councilmember Burnett. Aye. Councilman Bullock. Aye. Councilwoman Porter. Aye. Councilman Costello. Aye. Councilman Stokes. Yes. Councilman Glover. Yes. Councilman Ramos. Yes. Uh, the ayes have it. The bill moves to third reader today. Um, now on to City Council Bill 21 45. Council Bill 21 45, rezoning, Block 4053, Lot 13, Board 9, Section 20. Madam Vice President, I yield the floor to you. Thank you. The sponsor of this bill was Councilwoman Ramos of the 14th District. Uh, the committee heard this bill on May 11, 2021. I move the findings. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, since it's been properly moved uh, and seconded, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. please say nay. The ayes have it. Madam Vice President, I yield the floor to you. And I move aye. this bill. I move this bill favorable. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of approving this bill, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Uh, this bill will be printed for third reader. Now we're going to move on to education, workforce, and youth. Madam Clerk, if you could read into the record, City Council Bill 21-28. City Council Bill 21-28, landmark list. Section 128, Clifton School. I'd like to yield the floor now to Chairman Stokes. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee held a hearing on May the 13th, 2021. Um, I move the bill favorable. Is there a second? It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of moving this bill forward, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This bill will be printed for third reader. Uh, now on a public safety and government operations, Madam Clerk, please read in City Council Bill 21-59. City Council Bill 21-59, study and report succession planning. At this point, I yield the floor to Chairman Conway. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this bill came out of committee on May 12th, 2021. It was sponsored by Council Member Stokes. Uh, the committee approved the bill as favorable with an amendment. And the amendments are sent to council members uh, electronically. I move the committee amendment. So move. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor of adopting the committee amendments, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The, amendment, the amendments are now adopted. Uh, the floor is back to you, Chairman Collins. Thank you, Mr. President. And there are actually two floor amendments that are offered by the law department so that the le legislation can be approved for form and legal, legal sufficiency. Uh, those amendments were also sent to the council members electronically. Effectively, it um, sort of uh, changes the language to allow some flexibility for the director to meet the timeline for uh, the report's delivery. Uh, I move the floor amendment. There's a second. form. Of it. Is there a second? Second. So Mr. Chair has accepted this as a friendly amendment. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Uh, the floor amendment is now adopted. Mr. Chair, the floor is back to you. Thank you. I move the bill favorable as amendment. Second. The bill as amended has been um, has been uh, appropriately moved forward as well as seconded. All those in favor of approving this uh, bill as amended, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The bill carries and will be printed for third reader. Now on to 21-60, Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 21-60, study and report, fire department promotional practices. Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, I yield the floor to you. 
Thank you, Mr. President. This bill also came out of committee on May 12, 2021. It was sponsored by Council Member Chris Burnett and the committee approved the bill as favorable. So I move the bill as favorable. It's been properly moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor of approving this bill, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The bill will be printed for third reader. Uh, we will now turn bills to bills on third reading for final passage that requires uh, invocation of City Council Rule 12 1 for same day advancement. Uh, the clerk will read the bill and then call the roll. The first up is 21 40. City Council Rule 21 40, Floodplain Management Code Revision. President Mosby. You can keep reading, Madam Clerk. Cohen. We, we don't, yeah. Councilman McRae, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This bill is approved. Now on to bills on third reader for final passage. The clerk will read the bill and call the roll. City Council Bill 21-42, Real Estate Records, Modernization. President Mosby, Councilmember Cohen, McRae, Dorsey, Conway, Schleifer, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. This bill is approved now on, did I hear something? We're all good. All right. This bill is now approved. Now on to 21 49, Madam Clerk. Mr. President. Yes. Uh, I think you. before it goes to uh, Councilman Dorsey. Just a point of order. Uh, the clerk read the name of Councilmember Schleifer, who is not with us here tonight. Uh, thank you for catching that, Councilman Dorsey. If we could please strike the name of Councilman Schleifer, as discussed earlier, he is. Um, uh, practicing his uh, religious holiday today and unfortunately unable to join us. Uh, so we will strike the name from uh, Councilman Slifer from the world. Uh, My so apologies. No problem doing that. Uh, bill number 21-42 is approved. Uh, now on to 21-49. City Council Bill 21-49, prohibited disposals, fines and reporting, the Neighbors Against Predatory Dumping Act. President Mosby, Councilmember Cohen, McRae, Dorsey, Conway, Middleton, Torrance, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. This bill is approved. Now on to 21 62, Madam Clerk. City Council Bill 21 62, High Performance Newly Constructed Dwellings Clarifications. President Mosby, Council Members Cohen, Dor McRae, Dorsey, no. Conway. Please, uh, no, there's a no from, was that Councilman Dorsey? Yes. A no from Councilman Dorsey? Middleton, Florence, Burnett, Bullock, Porter, Costello, Stokes, Glover, Ramos. No. Thank you. Please note there's a note from Councilman Dorsey as well as Councilman Ra Councilwoman Ramos uh, for 21 62 on third reading. This bill is approved. Uh, chairs, now on to committee announcements. When you hear your committee, please proceed with your committee's announcement. First up is Madam Vice President of ECD. Thank you, Mr. President. The Economic and Community Development Committee will hold the following virtual WebEx hearing. June 22nd, 2021 at 2.10 p.m. Bill number 21-0056, Urban Renewal Canton Industrial Areas Amendment sponsor Cohen. We will also hear on June 29th, 2021 at 2 p.m. City Council Bill 21-0037-R. It's an informational hearing studying options to rid Baltimore City of vacant properties. And the sponsor is 
Porter. Thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you, Madam Vice President. Next up, we'll go to Education, Workforce, and Youth. Chairman Stokes, the floor is yours. No announcements. Thank you, Chairman Stokes. Next up, we have Health, Health Environment, and Technology. Uh, Councilwoman, Chairwoman McCray, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. There are no announcements. Thank you, Chairwoman McCray. Next up, we'll go to Chairman uh, Conway at Public Safety and Government Operations. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the Public Safety and Government Operations Committee will be meeting to hear Bill 21 0001 on Wednesday, May 26, 2021, at 1 p.m. Uh, virtually. And this is the Surveillance Technology in Baltimore Bill. Uh, it's sponsored by Councilmember Burnett. And then the committee will also be meeting to hear Bill 21 0033 on Wednesday, May 26, 2021, at 101 p.m. virtually. Uh, and this is Imari's LGBTQ Procurement Preference Act uh, and is sponsored by Council Member Odette Ramos. Uh, and then one more, we've got uh, Bill 21-0066. Uh, we're gonna be meeting on Wednesday, May 26, 2021 at 102 p.m. virtually. And this is on retirement systems, precluded investment and divestment fossil fuel companies, uh, sponsored by myself, Council Member Conway. That's all we have, thank you. Council member or chairman? I'm, I'm both. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chairman Conway, thank you for that. Um, now we'll move on to Chairman Costello and Ways and Means. Thank you, Mr. President. Bear with me for one moment. I move to suspend rules 10-2 and 10-3 to announce a hearing. Without objections, rules 10-2 and 10-3 will be suspended. Hearing and seeing no objection, the rules are suspended. Uh, Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Ways and Means Committee will hold uh, hearings on Council Bill 21-0080, Ordinance of Estimates for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2022. On May 27th at 2 p.m., this will be a budget overview with uh, the Bureau of Budget and Management Research and the Baltimore City public school system and on june 1st 2nd 3rd 4th and 7th from 9 a.m to 10 p.m these are the specific agency hearings uh, that schedule will be posted on the city council's website uh, mr president i move to suspend rules 10 2 and 10 3 to announce a hearing without objection we will without suspend objection. rules 10 2 and 10 3 hearing and seeing no objections the rules are suspended mr chair the floor is yours Thank you, Mr. President. The Ways and Means Committee will hold the hearing hearings on Bill 21-0081, Annual Property Tax for Fiscal Year 2022, um, on uh, Thursday, May 27th uh, at 5 p.m. This is essentially our City Council Taxpayers' Night. Taxpayers' Night provides residents of Baltimore City the unique opportunity to share comments and concerns about the city's budget. This will also be added to the city council's website. And this is the one opportunity to provide public input uh, in a hearing format uh, on the council's deliberation on these three bills. Uh, Mr. President, I move to suspend rules 10-2 and 10-3 to announce a hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Without objection, rules 10-2 and 10-3 on the city council will be suspended. Hearing and seeing no objection. The rules are suspended. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Ways and Means Committee will hold hearings on Council Bill 21-0082. This is the Mayor and City Council resolution with the operating budget for the Baltimore City Board of School Commissioners for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022 on the following dates and times. On Thursday, May 27th at 2 p.m. Uh, for the budget overview. And then on Friday, June 4th uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, Mr. President, all of these hearings will be virtual and are included uh, in the memo that will be uploaded to the City Council's website. Mr. President, I move to suspend Rule 10-2 to announce a hearing. At this point, we're, uh, there's been a motion to, to uh, suspend Rules 10-2 and 10-3. Uh, without hearing objection, we will do so. 
Hearing and seeing none, the rules are suspended. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Ways and Means Committee will hold a hearing on Council Bill 21-0072, Local 911 Telephone Fee Revision uh, at the request of the Department of Finance on Tuesday, May 25th at 10 a.m. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, if you could be prepared during regular announcements uh, to talk about the scheduling in the first week of June with the agencies from a budgetary perspective uh, and list the date associated with the first taxpayers night of the Baltimore City Council. Now we're going to move on to regular announcement. Members, please wait to be recognized to make regular announcements at this time. I see Madam Vice President with her finger up. Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. I just want to um, make a moment of silence for Ms. Charlene Pender. She um, was a long serving uh, community worker, Vice President of the Community Management Team for over 20 years in uh, the Cold Spring Newtown community and um, uh, board and was just a very was a key resource for um all the wonderful things that go on in that community um suddenly passed away uh last week so um we want to keep her and her family in prayer and uh in the uh cold spring newtown and the woodlands at cold spring community and also in an area which i reside thank you Thank you, Madam Vice President. Are there any additional announcements? Uh, Chair, uh, Councilwoman Ramos. Thank you, Mr. President and Council uh, colleagues. I wanna also put in a, a moment of silence for Dr. Robert Jones, uh, who uh, is the father of many of, uh, of Ricara Jones, who many of you know. Um, he passed suddenly last week, um, actually earlier, yeah, last week. And um, he also was my campaign manager for a little while and uh, was a very good man. And uh, Baltimore is certainly going to, to miss him. Thank you. Thank you. And Madam Vice President, if you could please know um, the, name of, the name of Bill Driscoll. Uh, he was a dedicated, uh, extremely passionate, uh, public servant to the city of Baltimore. He absolutely loved the city. He actually loved the work that he did. He worked in the council president's office for a very long time. Unfortunately, he was a victim to COVID. Uh, and I don't think that there's a body on earth that he would want to be recognized other than one that he served uh, and gave so much of himself to than the Baltimore City Council. So if we could please make sure that we read off the name of Bill Driscoll uh, when it comes time to the moment. Are there yes, any sir. are there yeah, any just, announcements? I just want to add that, uh, and I think a number of us have um, worked with Bill Driscoll, and just want to add that yes, I knew Bill Driscoll for a very long time. He also worked for the Department of Transportation, and um, at a time there was uh, one of the things I remember when we used to go for their ride, when the Department of Transportation used to take us on their ride alongs throughout our community, um, Bill was just very good in organizing that. And um, he just showed his love for the city of Baltimore. And he was just a very hard Baltimore, a very hard worker uh, for Baltimore city, just supported and, uh, helped everyone. Um, he was one of those kind of people that would take the back, take the shirt off his back to um, help someone. So um, um, my thoughts go out to, to his family. Definitely. Are there any other new announcements from members of the body? Yes, uh, Chairman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I See, just want to say- like New South Baltimore sunshine, man. You look like you're at the beach. I, I wish. Um, <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to speak to uh, the memory of Bill Driscoll. Um, there are about maybe two handfuls of people that I can count who have um, 
permanently changed the course of my life um, and had such a meaningful impact on my life. And, and Bill Driscoll is one of those people. Um, I was reading uh, a Sun article that was posted about him when he retired. Um, and former Mayor Jack Young, who, who Bill worked for as his chief of staff um, on the council, um, said something to the effect of uh, the residents of Baltimore have benefited from Bill's sharp political mind and calming spirit. Um, I think that anyone that knew Bill w w was impacted by that in a positive way. Uh, Bill was truly one of a kind and just want to make sure that we lift up his wife, Barbara, and his family during this very difficult time um, and say, uh, rest in peace, my friend. I'll see you again. Thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you for that, Mr. Chair. Um, again, I think we second uh, that over and over again. Bill was a very, very special person, not only to this chamber, but for the citizens of Baltimore. Uh, he carried that passion on his sleeve on a regular basis about everything Baltimore. Uh, and, you know, it was very hard news for all of us once we found out what took place and that he succumbed to COVID-19. Uh, uh, at this point, I'd like to yield the floor to Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I had the similar to the sentiments of Councilman Costello. Um, there are few people in my life who, where I can point at that moment in my life where I met them. And I can delineate my life into two parts defined by everything that happened before that moment and everything that happened afterward. And Billy Driscoll is one of those people for me. I had the privilege of meeting him 18 years ago, um, more than a decade before I, the idea to run for public office you know, would ever cross my mind. Um, and I knew him for all of that time as somebody who had in his personal life the same profound impact and impression uh, on people that he had throughout his uh, four decades of service to the city of Baltimore. I spent a uh, couple of hours today calling around to people inside and outside of city government just to you know talk and ask more questions about their experience with Bill. Uh, speaking to Luke Broadwater, who wrote the article that was referenced just a moment ago, Lester Davis, who told me that uh, that he and Bill spent 20 to 30 minutes having coffee and talking together for years every morning. Uh, working for the council president, um, Bill Berge, who like Billy Driscoll is, a, is still a longtime city servant. Bill Berge said to me, Billy Driscoll had a remarkable ability to guide people with complex decisions in service to the people of, city, of the city of Baltimore and had a unique ability to relate both upstream and downstream that he could counsel people um, you know, at the lower ranks of uh, city service, as well as people who respected his opinion well above his own rank, uh, and a unique ability to an advance to advance an agenda, uh, you know, for the in service to people, and to do so with a certain love and compassion and care that was felt by those who were both affected and those involved in the process um, throughout his time serving in the Office of Council Services and then for a number of years at the Department of Transportation and then as was mentioned as the Chief of Staff to the Council President and you know I want to uh, I also spoke to Liam Davis today who I, I also know you know would say he would not have a place in city government today if not for Billy Driscoll. And uh, like me, enjoyed a deep and meaningful relationship with him outside of government. And just as a final note, I'll say 
I think it's a real testament to that cycle of, kind of passing on knowledge and a love of service that Liam now has the privilege to serve in the same role in DOT where Billy served in that agency. Um, to all of my hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mutual friends with Billy, um, I just, um, I love you all and I'm just uh, so thankful to have all of you in my life, uh, which I would not have without Billy Driscoll. So thank you. No, thank you, uh, Councilman Dorsey. Are there any additional uh, comments for new announcements? Mr. President? Oh. I see uh, Chairman Costello. The floor is Did right. you want me to, I, I apologize, but I was confused. Did you want me to give that, that overview from the memo of the budget? Yeah, just, just provide uh, some of the dates, you know, while we have folks engaged and listening for the upcoming budget process. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. So on Thursday, May 27th at 2 p.m., we will have our budget overview uh, for fiscal year 2022. Uh, during that, we will receive testimony from uh, BBMR, or the Bureau of Budget and Management Research, and the Baltimore City Public School System. Uh, that will be a very high-level uh, hearing where we're going to discuss things like revenue projections, uh, new areas of spending, uh, mayoral priorities in the budget. Uh, sure. Then that same day at 5 p.m., we'll have Baltimore City Council Taxpayers Night. That'll be an opportunity for residents of the city to uh, voice their concerns. Uh, I want to note that the council will not be taking questions. Uh, we are simply there to listen. So the extent of the question you may get uh, will be, can you please repeat that? I didn't hear you. Um, then on Tuesday, June 1st, uh, starting at 9 a.m. and going till 10 p.m. each day, uh, we will hold agency hearings. Uh, we're using a very similar format to what we did last year, which is a, a hybrid uh, in-person slash virtual uh, format. Uh, important to note that you may uh, view the hearings from home on Charm TV, whether that's Comcast Channel 25, D on Channel 1085, uh, you can also stream the hearings for free online at charmtvbaltimore.com slash watch hyphen live. Uh, and uh, I, oh, that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. We will also look at some other innovative ways to ensure folks are keeping up with the budget process, understand the budget process, and are able to participate uh, in this very important process of the city. I believe I saw the hand of Councilman Glover. Did I see your hand, Councilman Glover? Yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to give a birthday shout out because I know that uh, Mr. Emmanuel, Alexis, they always watching Charm TV. A lot of the seniors in our neighborhoods watch Charm TV, but he turned 101 years old in the Bella Edison community. So I want to say happy birthday to him and also to Ms. Annie um, Corley, who turned 96 in the Berea community. She's the oldest resident that's here in the Berea community. So I just want to send a happy birthday out to those two fine individuals. Thank you. No, thank you, uh, Councilman Glover. Are there any additional announcements for the new announcements? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, members, uh, we received a veto message from Mayor Scott after we begin tonight's meeting. Uh, you can find his letter regarding Council Bill 21-22 uh, in your inboxes. So please make sure uh, you get a chance to uh, read and note that. Um, at this point, um, I would like to recognize uh, Vice President Middleton uh, as we close out this hearing. Thank you, Mr. President. The next meeting of the wonderful, hardworking Baltimore City Council will be held on Tuesday, June 8th, 2021 at 2 p.m. May we have a moment of silence for Ms. Charlene Pendell, Dr. Robert Jones, Mr. Bill Driscoll, and the now 116 victims of homicide year to date here in Baltimore City and the now 900 
and 73 COVID deaths since the pandemic began, and also our um, continued uh, problems with uh, the opioid epidemic with our families. Thank you. There being no further business at the desk, this concludes the 11th meeting of the 73rd term of your Baltimore City Council. Baltimore City, we love you.